I need to tape together all the patterns for both the view A and the view B because I want the high rise on the view A, I think, but I want the stovepipe legs from the view B. And I didn't see a way to figure out just which pieces had the pieces I wanted, so I need to assemble all of it. And then pick and choose from there which pieces I want. So, this will be a while. view A. And the view A is the low-rise stovepipe leg gene. And since I'm doing the high-rise, the only part of all of this that I actually need to cut out is just these leg portions, I think. So that's what I'm going to focus on here. Everything below the length adjustment onwards on the leg. That's what I'm going to cut out. Okay. I forgot to record the alterations that I did yesterday, so I kind of want to go over that. Um, so the first thing I did was I shortened the leg by th no, 4 inches. I did that because my inseam is 27.5, the garment, the pattern inseam is 32, so that would be 4.5 inches I need to take off. I left the extra half inch. It was like a safety, in case I got that wrong. I need a little bit of a buffer. And I don't mind it being too long by extra half inch. And then the second thing I did is I may increase the uh, rise by one and a half inches. I got that because I am three inches shorter than the person that the pattern is made for, and I took four, four and a half, but four inches off the bottom. So I figured the difference, the one and a half inches, 
left over is the extra length that I need from the rise. So that's what I did. I added one and a half from the point that they added for length and shortening, took off four inches from the point they did for length and shortening, and then I also put the leg pattern for, I think it's stove top? No, stove, stove pipe? I don't know, the wider leg in the pattern. I put that below the lengthening and shortening point. So hopefully that'll give me a good mix of the two views that I want to use. And I did that on the back and then also the front, I did the same amount so that they'll match up. I'm getting back into working on the jeans. It has been at least a month since the last time I've touched this because I ran into the point in instructions where I'm supposed to be top stitching. The top stitch thread I got is a vertical spool when I have only ever used the horizontal one. So I needed to go to the store to get a stand for the thread. That required, I thought, going actually into a store, so we didn't do it for over a month before I broke down and ordered one on Amazon because I don't leave my house. So I finally got that and I worked on some of the top stitching for the pockets and the belt loops. That's the word. And I worked on the belt loops. I'm kind of avoiding doing the try on an adjustment stage right now, but I'm running out of things to do. So essentially the next step is to baste all of the pieces together so that I can adjust the size and get the fit right. But that requires doing all of the steps, but in a temporary way. But it's been a month or more since I've done my mock-up, so I don't actually remember how to do that. So, Hopefully that turns out okay. So, I wasn't paying attention. 
I'm supposed to only sew here. I sewed here. So, I need to seam rip all of this. And then finish sewing all the way up. So, don't do that. Read your instructions or watch your instructional video before you sew things. So I went and watched the tutorial again on how to uh, make the pants and I apparently forgot to serge these edges and it probably doesn't matter but I want it to be done right so I'm seam ripping the edges to then go back and serge the edge for me to then go and re-sew so that it would last forever. Job done. How am I supposed to sew like this, Nathan? So I haven't really been filming any of the process of actually sewing the jeans. Um, partially because I just haven't really been feeling like it, but also because I got a pop socket for my phone. And now it won't fit in my phone holder for recording. But I'll just kind of walk you through what I've been doing. So I completed the front and back panel, so I did the... Uh, the zipper. Well, I um, actually got the video instruction for how to assemble the jeans that the pattern makers put out. So I've been following that. I got my fly going, got the pockets installed. I did the back and I and I assembled the back pockets and put those on. Got my top stitching done and I attached the front and back panels of the jeans together on the inseam. Now the next step for me to do is to serge that seam and press it and sew it down and then I will be doing the side seams and then I believe the waistband is next and then it'll be kind of in the final stretch of these pair. I did do a mock-up try-on where I basted all the pieces together and did a rough fitting, it seems like it fits okay, although the um, I do need to make a sway back adjustment to the waistband. And then I also made some mistakes. If you look really closely on this top stitching, this turned out a little wonky. So I tried to cover it up somewhat with the bars. I messed up these two, so I made them a bit thicker to kind of cover up my mess up because I already seam ripped it all at once and I think if I did that again, the fabric would be too weak with too many holes, so I call that good enough. sewn the front legs to the back legs. I did the inseam and the top stitch there and I also sewed the side seam and did the little bit of top stitching you do on just the top point to the end of the pocket. So that's the entire lower part of the jeans done. Next is installing the waistband.
finish installing the button and putting in the buttonhole and the pants. So I just used, for the buttonhole, I just used a buttonhole foot on a machine. It auto-sized to the size of the button, so that was pretty straightforward. The only pain in the ass part is that this, around the edge, is really thick. It has lots of layers of fabric. So I did have to hammer that down and get, it was kind of fiddly getting it maneuvered under the foot, but ended up making it just fine. And then I just hammered in the button. I didn't have a hole punch in order to put this through. I ended up just using a really janky uh, screwdriver to make a hole, but it worked out and that's all installed now. Next, I will be doing the belt loops. Thank you. 